don't really care. Yeah, basically hashish comes from uh, the word assassin, which means basically hashish eater. Now, that is, that's just a way that drugs can be used by political forces, but remember, all you're really doing in either case is modifying what's already in the brain in terms of what is possible. Hashish oil from boiling hashish, hashish crystals, these are various forms. Now, now in terms of the effects of THC, most people know, and in fact there's a lot of people who consume it, it's estimated up to 40% of the population your age may have had at least one marijuana cigarette. At least one as they, people laugh and chuckle and say, that's a conservative estimate. <laughs> and remember, you can predict the effects by knowing what parts of the brain are being stimulated. So, for example, for example, in the small or earlier stages, it's the frontal phenomena, so you get that kind of inebriation effect, which is somewhat similar but not identical to that from ethanol in small dosages. Then you get the synesthesia effect, where you get the effects of uh, feeling music. Uh, sometimes there's a red glow around uh, various kinds of objects. The meaningfulness of visual stimulations increase. People become more sensual. And also, because at higher dosages or after more than 15 minutes, the hypothalamus gets stimulated, something occurs called the marijuana munchies. You ever heard of the marijuana munchies? Right. If you give people a bunch of small marshmallows, somehow they get almost hyperphagic in nature in terms of consuming various kinds of uh, marshmallows. Um, and I always find it, too, very interesting is that, that uh, when you have individuals who are like this, they feel like they have, they're very uh, elegant and eloquent when they speak, but objectively, it's a phenomenon that's going on inside the brain. And, of course, there's time distortion. Time often feels like it stops. Now, People have asked me, what is the comparable effects of an ethanol drunk and a marijuana high? Very, very clearly. Compared to the average ethanol drunk, the marijuana high is marginal in terms of performance impairment, which is an interesting problem, isn't it? The typical ethanol drunk is really performance impairing. A comparable marijuana high, if it's impairing at all, is minimal in comparison. That data has been available in the literature for I don't know how long, but people do not want to take a look objectively at the data. Now, what are some of the medical uses of THC? Well, treating glaucoma for reduction of intraocular pressure. Asthma produces bronchial dilation. And remember, tetrahydrocannabinol works because you already have cannabinoid receptors in your brain. Some people actually seem to make this compound themselves. All right. In fact, some individuals actually get better when they smoke marijuana or take THC because normally they're fuzzy, but when they consume it, and these are usually heavy guys uh, with a lot of corticosteroids, a lot of cortisol, uh, when they take this compound, they actually are more focused. I think one of the interesting features is that you have to know the pattern of the brain activity. Did you realize that one of the greatest causes of mental retardation is ethanol consumption during pregnancy. Produces the fetal alcoholic syndrome or the fetal alcoholic disorder. The area of the brain that is impaired, which is frontal, right orbital frontal in particular, in fetal alcoholic syndrome, which means they have more difficulty, these individuals have more inter uh, difficulty interacting with their peers, following social rules and so forth, as one of the reasons they're involved with the criminal system so often that the drug that would reverse the effect that is produced in appropriate stimulation in this case would be THC. Now, isn't that an interesting contradiction? In order to reverse something from one drug, another drug is required. That is also well known in the literature. Okay, you can also use THC for treating nausea. And again, THC is an anti-emitic from chemotherapy. And it can be used to treat some types of epileptic seizures some types of epileptic seizures. And of course, the purity is critical. And there are many kinds of complex partial seizures that are, ap are appropriately treated by THC. The advantage, of course, the side effects are minimal. Now, again, this is not to say that psychotropics should be abused. They are like any other tool. They're only as proficient and as dangerous as the person using it and as knowledgeable as the person using it. Well, in terms of uh, 
specific features of marijuana in the 1980s. 70% of adults between ages of 27 and 32 had used THC. Tolerance develops with chronic high quantity exposure. Of course, as I mentioned before, the effects are short-term but not long-term memory deficits. Increased uh, cerebral blood flow in the right hemisphere. And of course, if you have increased cerebral blood flow in the right hemisphere, which is typical of most of your psychotropics, that's why you get the visual spatial effect. That's why you get the sense of the presence because the sensed presence is really your right hemispheric equivalent of your sense of self. And when it intrudes into awareness, you feel this other sentient being. Um, you also get attenuates the luteinizing hormone in men and women. And uh, of course, with excessive use, you can also get gynecomastia. What's gynecomastia? Gyneco? Gyneco? You can answer, you know. Gyneco being? What? Man boobs? Uh, man boobs? <laughs> At least you didn't say bitch tits. <laughs> Yes, you can get, very clearly, all right, ma female breast on a male. What about the amotivational syndrome? Well, the amotivational syndrome is basically with chronic usage, and it doesn't work for all. The critical thing about drugs and psychopharmacology in general is that not everybody responds negatively or in the same way. You realize even with opiates, that is with heroin, that addiction only shows up in 20% of the cases. So the issue of the adverse effects of any compound from aspirin to attending classes is going to be a function of the person's individual brain makeup and brain patterns. It's a marked analgesic. In fact, you realize that Siggy, yeah, good old Freud, used to use, and his friends in Vienna used to use uh, hemp to treat menstrual cramps. It wasn't very reliable because in those days they didn't realize that the active ingredient was the tetrahydrocannabinol. The chemistry wasn't there yet. Now, what about some of the other well-known ones? Uh, some of the interesting drugs which uh, have come out in the past. One of them is reserpine, a rawolfia, all right, rawolfia type of compound, rawolfia. And it was certainly available in the ancient Indus Valley. It was certainly uh, available to the Essenes. And uh, one of the things we find about reserpine, take a good look at it, is it's classic of drugs. Remember I said there's individual differences? A synergism means that when you put compounds together, they produce something different. And we found here that if an animal shows temporal lobal ability, is restrained, and is given recipine, the animal will show death-like features for a couple of days in hypothermia, and then literally rise from the dead. Now let's take a good look at that. One of the hypotheses we've come up with over the years in several cultures, sensitives, shaman, religious leaders, who are very likely to have been limbic epileptics, very often, and that's not a pejorative term, Limbic lability is tied to creativity, it's tied to insight, it's tied to extracting information from the environment that the contemporaries don't have, and it's right hemispheric, something to do with the right hemisphere and creativity. When they are restrained, tied, crucified, or whatever, and then given a bitter-tasting concoction that was followed by a death-like hypothermia for about three days, if the person recovered, the phenomenon was considered rising from the dead. Incidentally, this was a practice among the Celts. They were called the Druids. Rising from the dead, the proof of transcendence of death. Contemporary research indicates that these individuals would have sustained a specific type of brain damage that would result in an amnesia of people and places with whom the person was familiar, as well as a marked change in personality. And I should point out, that the Essenes, that's right, ancient Palestine, rough about 2,000 years ago, very interesting character at the time, walked around, consumed a bitter-tasting material, restrained and crucified. Was it a pharmacological phenomenon? Well, we will never know because we don't have a time machine, but the point is, if you understand synergisms, the greatest mysteries of the universe are no longer mysteries. The scientific method is the most powerful tool we have.